Iris, the Wonder Studio, multi-camera digital recording and streaming. Boom, from the mystery to the rainbow of communication. A WWG PCAE collaboration. The scene is set in Philadelphia, 1790. The Revolutionary War is over, and the young United States of America sets forth to build a great country. 29-year-old Mary Gerard awakens in the basement of the Pennsylvania Hospital, which was founded by Benjamin Franklin in 1751. She is shocked to learn that she's been placed here against her own will by her husband, Stephen Gerard, the richest man in the Republic. Mental hospitals of this period serve not only as places to keep undesirables from society, but also as a perverse form of entertainment. It was not uncommon for asylums to accept a small fee so townsfolk could point and jeer at the Stephen leaders. Girard is known as a great philanthropist who created Girard College and contributed majorly to the Pennsylvania Hospital. He almost single-handedly funded the War of 1812. Mary Alam Girard, on the other hand, is forgotten to history. And all of this, my dear friends, is absolutely true. Now, let us enter the world of Mary Gerard and experience what it may be like to be on the receiving end of an accusing finger. The Insanity of Mary Gerard, a drama in one act. Nothing, nothing, nothing! You are nothing and I shall be mad before I can see you, hear you, 
Oh, no, you mustn't touch us. For then we would have to. We'll tear you apart. Please we don't, don't exist. We're ghosts. You're friends. Selves of yourself. Fiends and angels. We know nothing. Except everything. You, you know. know. No. You know everything I want to know? Certainly. Assuredly. Definitely. Definitely. Then tell me. Tell me everything I want to know. What, what do you, you want, want to know, know Mary? Mary? Tell me where I am and how long I've been here. Oh, that's too simple. It's no fun. You know that already. The pen. Hospital. The same. As it was. This morning. This morning? How long have I been here? It's the same day. As it was, was before. before. I could not let it happen. It's only a matter of hours. It is impossible. Oh, being not here is horrible. Horrible. Of course it's horrible. It's, it's supposed, supposed to be. be. That's what you get for being crazy. Crazy, crazy Mary Gerard. Gerard. But I'm not crazy. You must be. Mr. Gerard, had you admitted. As a lunatic paying patients. The doctors have agreed. To keep you here. As long as Mr. Gerard continues to pay your bills in quite a lucrative account, you'll prove to be for a lunatic, Mary. It's all a misunderstanding. When I see the doctor, when I speak to Mr. Gerard, it'll be corrected. It's a mistake, I tell you. And that chair, I thought it would go mad. She will. In time. She sounds positively. Dark raving. Mad. That chair is one of the prized possessions. As inventions of Dr. Rush. She absolutely loves, loves it. And so do we. I couldn't see anything. No sooner was I strapped into it than I began to itch. Nerves. Only nerves. Or madness. And the echo in the bottom of my own screams. Oh, it was horrible. Oh, why would they tell me it's such a thing? Surely they know I'm not mad. But it's the proper treatment for your type of madness. Everybody knows. There are two kinds of, of madness. madness. The torpid. No subject to excitation. Dr. Ross. Has invented. Two appliances. To be used for. The treatment of the mad. The or revolving machine that shakes them up. The other is the tranquilizing chair for types like you. One subject to excitation or claims of sanity. I must get out of here, Ma. I couldn't have been here only one day, and it's impossible. Let it's only now. Near midnight. Soon it will be Sunday, and, and you'll, you'll be able to hear the, the bells, bells from all the churches. Stephen Gerard will be in his usual pew, praying for your soul. No doubt. I must see him, speak with him. I'll ask him to forgive me or pass away to some other place. Passes that we never met. <laughs> the you idea. Did you ever hear of such a thing? Shocking. Horrid. Disgraceful. A dreadful idea. For a married woman to have. Leave her husband. husband. She must be mad. If you know anything about me, you know that my marriage was the worst thing that ever happened to me. And tell that the hussy. I must say. I'm shocked. And this from. A woman legally bound. To a husband for 13 years. She sounds like a woman of the street. A common whore. A body house heart. A ten penny slut. How dare you speak to me like that? I'm Mr. Stephen Gerard. I do not have to tell your tossing tears. Get out! Get away from me! Get out! No, don't, Mary. Don't send us off. Or shut us out. We're only trying. We'll help you, Mary. Because mildly what you're bound to hear tomorrow. Only then it will be so, so very much worse. worse. No one would dare speak to me in such a manner. They, they will, will, Mary. And worse. Much, much worse, worse Mary. The ones on the street. The ones at those windows. The ones who come daily. To stare and point and, and laugh, laugh at, at the, the lunatics. lunatics. Who mock them. Try to frighten them into fits. Or convulsions. Or seizures. Of the most horrid kind. And it works beautifully, Mary. You'll be surprised at how often and how violently the seizures come. I don't believe it. I don't believe there are people like that. People who do things like that is cruel. People aren't like that. I'm sure they're not. She yeah, has so much to learn. You mustn't undervalue the power of an accusing finger. The amusement people derive from the suffering of others. The superiority they feel when they see those last fortunate. They relish it. Revel in it. Rejoice for it. It mustn't be allowed. I'll speak to someone about it. <laughs> Speak to someone. Mustn't be allowed. Glorious. Wonderful. Mary, can't you see how large the windows were made? So the people wouldn't have to stoop to, to see in. So not to look at me. Not here. I couldn't stand it, I tell you. I'll be gone before they come. And if I'm not, I'll hide from them. Under the covers of the bed. Under the bed if necessary. I won't have them looking at me. I couldn't stand it, I tell you. No. Poor Mary. If you 
Why, it'll make matters so much worse. worse. The attendants will pull you out and chain you there. The animals are breaking the window. No, Mary, it's much better if, if you, you don't, don't hide. hide. You said you know all I want to know. Then tell me how to get out of here. Please, please. Well, we can only show you. Yes, yes show, show you. you. You have to start at the beginning by, by seeing, seeing the warder of the cell. But I saw her this morning. She won't help me. You have to see her for she's, she's the, the beginning. beginning. If you are to know the end, you have to begin at the start. Mary, that's your name, isn't it? My name is Mrs. Stephen Gerard. You will call me by that name if you address me again. Oh, no, I won't. I call you Mary because I was told by Mr. Gerard himself not to call you any such false name as that. Her Mrs. Stephen Gerard, and there is nothing false about that. Oh, we've got the Queen of France and the King of Poland, too. Call yourself whatever you will. It'll cut no ice with me. I call you Mary because I was told by Mr. Gerard himself to call you so. But you know who I am. You came to my home in your carriage to take me to see the doctor. You know I'm Mrs. Gerard. I went to Mr. Gerard's home, not yours. All I know is you're Mary, and more than that, I don't want to know. Look, I have some money. Oh, you'll be glad you gave this to me. I'll see to it that you get some real food some of the time. Not that gruel, something to keep your strength up. You don't understand. I was to come with you to see a doctor, and you're to take me home at once. Home? This is your home now, and it's cheery, too. In daylight, that is. If you can see the daylight in those windows from all the admirers you'll be entertaining up there. What admirers? Tomorrow's Sabbath, folks will be in and out all day. You'll see for yourself then, I figure. I won't be here tomorrow. I came to see the doctor about a, a personal condition. I demand that you take me to the doctor at once. Think of the work by a yard if you act like that too frequently. Do you have any idea who my husband is? I know who you claim he is. He's the wealthiest man in the city of Philadelphia. Wouldn't surprise me enough. Probably the wealthiest in all the republic. Yeah, that too. If you keep me here against my will, you will be making a terrible mistake. He might be the constable, as board of directors, you and everyone connected with it. No, nope, don't think so. Seems I know more about the likes of your Mr. Gerard than you do, Mary. I doubt that anyone in your position will know anything about the likes of Mr. Gerard, but your superiors will. All I know is that it was Mr. Gerard who said that you're a lunatic, and he asked ever so kindly that you be placed here for the rest of your natural life, lest, of course, you be here. For God's sake, don't jest with me. Oh, no, it's no jest. You can be sure that the locks here are the finest and realest locks you'll ever see. <laughs> Don't be upset, Mary. That's one past. You can forget all about that one, Mary. I have to get out of here. See someone, speak to someone. What will they let me see someone? Oh, we can let you see anyone. You too. Just tell us who it is. Name the name. And instantly you'll see them. Will you truly? Or am I only imagining them? What does it matter, Mary? Give us the name. I want to see my mother. Her mother. Oh, how funny. Little Mary wants to see her mother. Yes, please, let me see her. You sent for me, madam. Mother, oh, mother, you talk to me. Rise, madam. Of course I would come at the bidding of Mrs. Gerard. I could hardly do otherwise, couldn't I? Oh, mother, I need you. Need me, madam? You never needed me very much, and now I'm sure you need me not at all. Surely there is nothing that I can do for you that you haven't the wherewithal to do much better than I. It isn't money that I need from you. I should think not. It is comfort that I need of you now. Comfort, madam? You live in the very heart of comfort. Never have I seen a home this fine. Furnishings this rich. You must be very happy here. What are you talking about? Do not mock me, madam. Show that you can see this dark, damp, and horrid here. I see only that when you married above your station, it brought you many great rewards. I see also why you did not want your family coming in here, traipsing the dirt from workmen's feet across the polish of your fine wood floors. My family was not welcome here, neither were my friends, and now I myself am not. I told you what thankful I like when I visited you. 
Surely you believed me then, didn't you? Of course, you speech none, they say. You didn't believe me, did you? You thought I didn't want you here because I was ashamed of you. Uh, something like that, yes. It's all right, we understood. We knew it would happen, it happens all the time. But it wasn't me at all. It was Mr. Gerard, he didn't want you here. That's all right too, why should he? We weren't kin to him and I won't listen to you. Be right, Mr. Gerard. He was a prince to your father, an absolute prince. I will not listen to any bad words about Mr. Gerard. Not the slightest and abuses me. Oh, for shame that you should give him cause. And double shame that you be brazen enough to tell it. You should have learned by now that there is nothing unusual about a husband's abusing his wife. It is the woman's place to be clever enough to seem to do his will, whether she do or no. And must the wife always bend to the husband's will, whether it be right or wrong? Most assuredly, for it is the husband's place to rule his wife and the woman's to obey her husband. And why must it be so? Because it is the law. Whose law? God's law. When you marry, you vow to honor and obey your husband till death do you part. Do you dare question the law of God himself if it is unjust? I cannot help you, madam. It would have been well for you to have had his child. Don't you think I tried to have a child by him? All I know is that you have stupidly jeopardized not only your own welfare, but everything else. If Mr. Gerard repudiates you, so must I. If Mr. Gerard repudiates you, so must I. No, mother. No, no. Don't leave me here. She didn't even see me here. She thought that I was so busy. But I wasn't. You never were. Were you, Mary? What? You cheated me. I want to see my mother here. Do you think? Do you imagine? Do you suppose? That it would make the slightest bit of difference? difference? Yes. When she sees me here, sees what they have done to me. But she won't, Mary. She, she won't. won't. Why should she? She'll, She'll get from Mr. Gerard, Gerard the little help, help she's always wanted. wanted. She'll not come here, here again. again. You're lying to me, liar. We? You're doing it. To yourself. We want you to see how things are with you, how, how things, things are, are, are with you. How things are with her, what do you mean by that? Dr. Rust asks that I speak to you personally, Mr. Gerard, to make known to you certain surprising developments that have only now come to our attention regarding the state or condition of your wife. Sir. I don't know if you value your time, but I do mine. Please hurry up and be brief. I will try. May I sit? Sir. By all means, sit or do whatever you wish. Let us get this bothersome business settled. There is a question of the adequacy of her monthly payment. I shall naturally increase the allotment to whatever sum is necessary. Oh no, Mr. Gerard. Let me assure you that it is not a question of cost. The generosity of your settlement is well known by all concerned in this matter. No, it is not a financial matter, but rather one concerning your wife's mental and physical condition. As I am quite familiar with one, not at all interested in the other. I doubt anything you have to tell me could be of at least interest to me. I am willing to listen to you only briefly. I have rather surprising news for you and for all of us at the hospital. Mrs. Gerard is with child. Yes. Do you mean, sir, you have been cognizant of that fact? Yes, sir, I have. And were you so aware when you had her brought to us? Yes, sir, I was. And yet you had her brought to us to be confined with the mentally insane? Most certainly. I find it curious that I need to point out to you that physical conditions have nothing whatsoever to do with the state of one's mind. I brought my wife to you because she is. Mr. Gerard, let me assure you that that is not always the case. Although it is true that the mind functions separately from the body which supports it, there is one major exception to that general rule. And what's that? The state of pregnancy. My wife is insane. Mr. Gerard. I said she's insane. Mr. Gerard, I am trying to tell you that given these newly discovered circumstances, we cannot permit you to leave your wife in such condition. See, perhaps this will be sufficient. It is not a question of money, sir. Is that fact? It is, sir. Come, come, Mr. Phil. Now, I am an active and a loyal supporter of our new republic, and I am also a businessman. In both capacities, it has been my experience in dealing with everything in life is a question of money. Surely you can't believe that, Mr. Gerard. Believe it? I know it. It is fact. I have staked my career on it. And as you can see, I have prospered. Look at this.
$3,000, but this is made out to, to you, a payment in advance, which I hope you will be gracious enough to accept from me. Teleport of trust season upon my death. I shall bequeath Pennsylvania Hospital a check ten times the amount given to you today. I don't know what to say. Answer this. Can it be done? Yes. Good. See to it then. But sir. Yes. What of the child? That sir is no concern of mine. I would not have a child of mine born under such conditions for all the money in the world. And I can assure you, neither would I. Mr. Gerard, do you mean the child? I bid you good day, sir. Sir. Mr. Phillips, he can't hear you. Yes, he can. He looks right at me. He can't hear you, Mary, because he doesn't want to. And then lose all their faculties as a prophet sound. What will become of my child? Whose baby is it, Mary? Yes, tell us. Tell us who the father is. Tell us. Tell us. Tell The father's unimportant. He was the one warm and affectionate to me. You were untrue, Mary. You could call it your husband. And broke your marriage vows. For shame. Shame, Mary. You will give birth to an evil thing. Only evil comes from evil. Something dark and horrid comes from evil. Darkness, bred in darkness, gives forth darkness. darkness. I don't believe it. You're trying to drive me mad. You should have been like Polly Kenton. Yes, definitely like, like Polly. Polly. Then you would have been all right. Had your baby and, and your, your home. home. Your mother would have been so grateful. Mrs. Lum would have loved having a daughter like Polly. What are you talking about? They were talking about me, Mrs. Gerard. Well, who are you? I don't know you. My name is Polly, Polly Kenton. There's a reason why it should be important to you. I'm only one of a long line of housekeepers who will replace you, Mrs. Gerard. You dare say that to my face? I'm of no importance, really. I'm only one of a long line of girls and women who he will turn to, or has turned to already. You know that. Yes, I know it. And that Sally Bickham is the slut. He brought her into my house, called her his housekeeper, and tried to keep me out of town so I could see that she could get over my roof. And you, you're just like her. Is that it? In a way, just like her. And there'll be others too, I suppose. Oh, I'm sure there will be. And so you're just a whore, like all the others. I'm his housekeeper, Mrs. Gerard. The only difference is that I will be more successful and longer lasting than the rest. He will even come to care for me a little, as much as he's able to care for a woman anyway. I don't believe you. I wouldn't lie to you, Mrs. Gerard, because I have no reason why hasn't he cared for me? In the beginning, he did. You should have had his child. But it wasn't my fault we couldn't have children. Oh, I thought it was, and I knew he blamed me. You sound as though you wanted him to care for you. Is that so strange? It isn't practical. You should have known what you could get from him and what you could not. And you should have known what he expected in return and seen to it that you gave it to him. His affection was all I wanted. But he had none to give. Wealth is what he had to give you. That was nothing to me, nothing! If you could have managed to have a baby, you would have completed your side of the bargain, and he in turn would have given you his undying gratitude. And if you could have managed to have a son, he would have won his affection as well. But we couldn't have children. You should have seen to it that you had a child, even if it was not his. He would have thought it was his, and the bargain would have been complete. You would have won his affection. But you have not had his children, have you? Well, of course not. A man expects his wife to bear his children and his mistress to bear none. And yet you've won his affection. Yes, I have. Why? How? By not even wanting it. The more outrageous that you tried to gain his attention, the more he turned away in loathing. Your behavior has made him come to hate you. Has he said that to you? I can tell you his words exactly. <clears throat> I hate her like the devil. And I know with pleasure that this feeling increases daily. He wouldn't say that. He wouldn't feel that. What intolerable wrong did I do him? Perhaps he does not know himself. The fact is, however, you were not sensible. You see, it is never sensible to expect a man to understand or to tolerate the dreams of his wife. And they told him that. I suffer from dreaming. Oh, we've got us some cures for dreamers here, Mary. Dr. Ross gives special cares to dreamers, Mary. Some icy baths in the winter. Winter is 
under the thumbnail. A white hot iron on the soles of the feet for sanity. They will not do that to me, for they know I'm staying. How could they possibly know that? They know it's because it's true. Did they tell you? You are staying, Mary. No, one can tell. Surely one can tell for oneself. No, they have to tell you, Mary. Tell you. Who can do that? The doctors, the board of managers? You can, Mary. It's easy as pie, Mary. Mary? Crazy Mary Gerard! You can tell if you really, really want, want to. It's easy as pie, easy as making your bed. Gathering flowers, listening. Yes, the most praise to God, Mary. God? 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 Where are you, God? Do you ever pray, Mary? What do you mean, of course I? No, 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 no. To really, really pray to the almighty God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, with all of your mind. To pray until his heart and his soul and his mind reach out to you until you are ready, Mary. Until you are ready, Mary, like Crystal. I I am your what is your life going to keep? Fuck Brigham's pie. Have you ever made your bed, Mary? Just like my daddy. Few women have. Innocent? So that she married you. 
she thought she gained the whole world, and in reality, only gained this little room. She had everything she should have wanted. It cost us too great. It cost her nothing. <laughs> nothing? <laughs> what is the value of nothing, Mr. Gerard? What is its price? Can you estimate the enormity of nothing? I can tell you it is beyond calculation. I was prepared to give you everything, but you wanted only nothing. So it is fitting that you have placed me here in this room with nothing. You had everything a woman could have reasonably have wanted. What good is reason without some little affection? If you wanted affection, you should have told me, instead of making a public display of yourself. Stephen, I made no attempt to hide my behavior from you. We only differed in one way. I didn't spring my love upon you this way. Perhaps I should not have done the things I did. But in that, I am not alone. Don't lock me up, Stephen. Send me away. Send me away and lock me in a room and allow me to suffer my conscience and dream my dreams alone. Alone. A seclusive wife pleases nobody. The needs of my sex are fewer than those of yours, madam. Consequently, it is all more important for a man's wife to see to it that his needs are met. Your acknowledgment of me as your husband never went beyond the duties of the flesh. You mean to say my thoughts were my own? You mean to say you failed to be a dutiful wife. When I found you, Mary, you were a peasant, and your mother remained one. I had hoped you would rise above your origin sufficiently, but you didn't. You have failed me. Yes, Stephen. In those ways, I have failed you. When I was taught that you blamed me, I you thought I was barren. I thought I had cheated you out of the sun. But it wasn't to me. You could have put life in my body because you had none of your own. It isn't my child that is lost to you, Mr. Gerard, but the freedom of my mind and the love of life itself. May God have pity on you, sir. God? I do not know if God exists. If I thought he did, I would pray, Mary, that he would keep you in your soul on time. As I cannot be sure of God, I will see to it myself that you endure a hell on earth. And I will pray to a possible God that it will endure forever. Yes, five. Five is right again. 
so clever is our Mary. Five. And twenty. Twenty. Twenty more. Twenty more. Five and twenty years. I could not stand it. Oh, the police there. there. In this chair. The tranquilizing chair. chair. The restraining chair. Down, down. Like, like the, the evil thing, thing you are. Oh, no, no. God will not permit it. He'll be merciful to me and not let me stay here. Please, God. Please, please, sweet Jesus. Be merciful to me and not let me stay here for such an age. Oh, isn't she funny? Oh, sweet, sweet Jesus. Jesus! Break the cross and mouth in prayer. God <laughs> won't hear you either, Mary. No more than Mr. Phillips. Why, Why should, should he? he? He's too busy. Besides, he set you up for it. It's God's just Mary. And the, the fool, fool is you. Yeah. Get away from me. I won't listen to you. Please, God, please. Oh, look at her. I love it when she prays to the dark corners of the damp wall. To the empty spaces between the stars. If she could see any stars. <laughs> Ha, 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 ha. 